when we first started talking, you, you touched upon the, the topic of energy and oil and gas. So Iran is the center of um, sheet power for the Islamic world. And Iran and Saudi Arabia are also opposite poles in the Middle East in religious politics, but both also possess massive oil reserves. So what nuance does this conflict have now? Is it political? Is it religious? Does it have to do with energy, meaning money? Because in the past few days, we've seen oil prices going up after dropping, I think, 35% in the past month. We now see the prices going up the moment that the conflict rises. So what is this conflict really about? Politics, religion, money? It's about uh, insisting on status quo against forces of changes. If energy could be helpful, it would be used as a leverage. If uh, escalating tension between religions, it will be used again by Saudi Arabia as a tool. As I mentioned, and you asked me, they did know about some consequences. When beheading barbarically mm -hmm. a famous, respectful religious leader, just peacefully calling for changes, for democracy, for equality in Saudi Arabian society. According to a report published in 2011 in the United States, 40% of the Saudi Arabian society lives under the line of poverty. Mm -hmm. So should somebody who calls for equality, should such a people, such a man, a religious leader should be beheaded or not? What kind of justice could justify that? Nothing. The modern world would condemn, denounce such kind of behavior. And what about the money? I will insist on that because we've seen oil prices drop. We've seen people taking a breath out of uh, the, the, the low prices. They, they can move easier. They can get oil easier. They can get gas easier. Everything moves easier. And then suddenly we see a rise because of the conflict. Internally, it could affect, suppose that the 2016 budget of Saudi Arabia faces a deficit of uh, 97 US billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. So internally, it could affect, but when it comes to mentality of Saudi Arabian administration, mm -hmm. they talk about money when they talk with Western partners. We are a rich country. We are the richest uh, government in the region. So never criticize us. Never ask us for any change. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to insist a little bit more. Is the oil price keep go will, keep will the oil price keep going up? Uh, according to some technical uh, Analysis, yes, in 2016. Is we the will conflict to blame? Is the conflict to blame for the rise? No. No. Not uh, a major factor. Since we touched upon the subject of energy, I would like to touch upon another field of relations, and we've, we've said a little bit about that as well. Turkey. Iran is the second largest supplier of natural gas to Turkey. Is that right? I think 30%, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Something about that. However, relations between the two countries, on a political level, let's just say, have not been at their best, especially in the past few years. So where does the friction originate from? Is it because of what's happening in Syria or what started in Syria? Is it because of the Kurds? Is it something completely different? We are big neighbors. Iran and Turkey are big neighbors with very good relation. But uh, quite transparently, we agreed not to agree on two specific points. The oldest and the first is Cyprus issue. Mm 
<laughs> <laughs> and the second one is Syrian conflict. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes, you are right. In recent years, uh, we have disagreement on Syrian conflict. You said about Saudi Arabia before that it creates trouble in the area, trying to keep things as they are or change them, let's say, to its favor, so it can rise up as a leader profile in the area. Some describe Turkey in the same way. One of those countries is Cyprus, saying that Turkey is getting at trouble, especially to gain momentum and rise up as a leader, a regional leader. So do Iran and Cyprus have any common interests, particularly in view of relations with Turkey and how it's functioning? Well, first, let me comment on the, on the, the first par part of the question. You cannot uh, put Saudi Arabia and Turkey in one package. What differentiates them if they're both causing trouble in their regions and are both trying to rise up as regional leaders? Maybe Muslim Brotherhood could be enough to justify the, the, the differences. Mm. Maybe regional ambitious could be enough once again. Maybe approaches to, to Egypt and dynamic of power in Egypt could be enough, but again, to talk about differences between Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Yeah. That's different. <laughs> That's a major difference. So um, what are Iran's and Cyprus' common interests? Peace and stability in the region. That's enough for us. We are in favor of peace and stability, prosperity of, of the people of, the, of this region. We don't need any more crisis, any more violence in the region. This is, what, according to what I understand the, from Cypriot politics, this is what in common between Iran and Cyprus. So the, the relations between our two countries have been extending in multiple fields. Prosperity is one of them, economic prosperity. Yeah. In fact, most recently, I think we had the, um, the agreement <coughs> between the two countries to avoid double taxation. Yeah. How far do you see our relations going in general? Excellent, especially uh, during the last year, we have had a very high level exchange of uh, delegations. Minister Kasulidis visited Tehran. Mm -hmm. Our, our uh, Justice Minister came here to sign two agreement. We signed, the, the, as you mentioned, the agreement of, uh, on avoiding double taxation. <clears throat> but the legal aspect of the job was not the only aspect. We brought uh, very, very huge uh, uh, companies, Iranian companies, major companies to Cyprus. We brought uh, NITC, National Iranian Tanker Company, which is the, the biggest in the world. We brought, we brought Irisil, which is the biggest in our region, again, shipping company. Mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, we had the Sanir Company in, uh, in Cyprus, which is <coughs> the biggest uh, general contractor in Iran, working in, in different countries ready and willing to, to finance project in, in Cyprus. We have uh, in pipeline other delegation as well to come. Next week, we are going to have uh, Deputy Minister of Higher Education and Technology. So economy, enter entrepreneurship, and now education. Yeah. <laughs> that means that you believe in Cyprus to be a free and a prosperous and a, um, a country that has perspective? Of course. We, we believe in Cyprus as a gate to European Union for us. And it's my dream. I have told my friends repeatedly in Cyprus that it's my dream to see Cyprus playing the role of uh, uh, gateway, not only to EU, but also to Africa as well. There are some countries now playing such a role. Such as? Such a role for Iran, 
re-export and re-import. Mm -hmm. We have a turnover of 18 billion with such a country. Why not with, with Cyprus? So Cyprus as a prosperous country, is Cyprus a free country? That means, how do you see the developments in the uh, President Anastasiadis, Saikinji negotiations over the Cypriot problem? Will we be a free country within 2016? I mean, people are saying that we're cl closer than ever to a solution. Is a solution feasible in your view? I'm a resident ambassador, not an expert. I would <laughs> confess that. <laughs> uh, but I'm optimistic more than ever according to my studying of the situation and the background of the story, uh, I'm optimistic that, uh, God willing, 2016 would be the ending point of division in the island. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. For thank you for your presence here. You, it's a really big honor. Thank you for a kind invitation. And thank you for watching. <laughs>